Welcome to this short video presentation. My name is Victor Snook. I am the Senior BIM Consultant at Address. Okay. Today in this, re this recording I'm going to go through some of the enhancements to Revit 2013. The enhancements I'm going to be looking at are the new component based staircases and the railing enhancements. So if we have a quick look at the railing, the uh, component based staircases to start off with. Okay, right, component based staircases, runs, landings, and support components can be modified with direct manipulation. So this is getting away from the old style of drawing Revit staircases. Okay, previously where you would create a sketch and it would actually turn into a staircase. Here, you actually create the landings, the railings, and the support components as separate entities, okay, without the need for creating a sketch. With each of the individual components, once I actually select a component, as you'll see in my little demonstration, um, you can directly manipulate the items with handles or grips. Okay. There's lots of kind of grip editing and stuff, so it makes it a lot easier to actually get the staircase that's required um, by direct manipulation rather than actually having to keep going back into the sketch and manipulating 2D geometry to form your 3D sketch. At the top of here, at the top here, you'll see a variety of different staircases that are now available to be able to produce using the component-based stairs. Okay, more stair layouts and overlapping stair capabilities for 2013. Okay, so now you can able to produce stairs as the ones shown at the top, and also have overlapping stairs that weren't previously available with the normal sketch-based staircase. Annotations and representation improvements to support industry and firm standards. Okay, some of the annotation improvements are here. So you can see that there is an, you can automatically uh, number staircases and have the number of treads and the size of the risers indicated, which I'll show you how to do. The other thing as well, you've got under visibility graphics, there are a load more options how to actually turn on and manipulate the staircase visibility. Okay. The next thing to have a look at is going to be railing enhancements, which I'll show you. Okay, the railing, the ra okay, rail transition and extensions to top rails and handrail improvements. Okay, so basically, what you've got now, you can, you've got the ability to be able to add a rail transition and extension to a rail without having to model the transition or extension inside the balustrade family. Okay, which is a nice, and it's very, very flexible indeed. Okay, the other is auto placement of continuous railing elements. Okay, so when I actually um, place down my railing, it gives me continuous rail elements. Okay, and you can kind of see from the preview here that the the transition between the rails um, is actually the way it's supposed to be, which is always uh, difficult to achieve in previous versions without actually modifying the sketch geometry and changing the angles of the sketch line work. Railings can be previewed during sketching. Okay, and on the railing tab, you have options, and on the options button, you have a little button that says preview. What this will do is when you sketch the railing using 2D geometry, uh, you will have a 3D representation of the rail presented to you, as in here, rather than having to complete the rail uh, path, then go back in and see the transition and see the, the railing in 3D. You can actually get it as you sketch it. Okay, so go to Revit. Okay, I've got uh, three views here. So I've got a, a little section view, a 3D section view, and a floor plan. So under the circulation tab, I've got my stair by component. Okay, you also have the stair by sketch, which was previously available. So you have both um, options. And I'll show you in my, my demonstration how um, you can convert individual components to sketch base to give you ultimate flexibility for shape and for configuration. Okay, I'm going to create a stair by component. When I actually select the stair, the stair by component tool, um, you'll see under here I've got land, I've got runs, landings, and support. So this is where you start to modify and create all of the individual components as individual entities. You can also create straight flights, um, spiral staircases, different types of spirals, winders, L winders, and U-shaped staircases as well as different configurations. Okay. Also for this, this release as well, I now have the ability to be able to put a location line so I can draw my staircase to the left, to the centre or to the right. As the previous version, it was only available to draw it up to the middle of the staircase. Okay, I also get a little button here that says automatic landing, 
Um, but what that will do is it'll add a landing in between the runs that I'm going to draw. Okay. For this particular staircase example, I'm going to turn off my railings. So I'm going to say railings none because I'm going to add those afterwards. So again, okay, so to draw your component staircase, all I do is select my the configuration that I require and start to sketch out my stairs. So I'm going to say I want my 14 risers for this particular part. And as you'll see from the 3D view and from the section view, it starts to create the rise, the the, uh, the flight for me. As I go down and create my next flight, um, it will create the second flight, the secondary flight, and it will also put a landing in between me because I have the automatic landing button ticked. And I'm going to go create my next flight and finish my staircase off. And like any staircase, I've used all my risers to go from bottom to top. Okay, if I want to configure my um, components, okay, what I can do is I can actually select the run that the uh, the, the landing that is actually given me, and if I delete the landing. I can say landing and I can put the landing on as a separate entity. So I can say I want to put a landing here. So this is where you can actually design and create your um, staircase as individual components, giving you ultimate flexibility. Within the staircase styles, I can go and pick uh, precast concrete staircases. I can pick uh, private staircases. So you can pick a series of different components and you can place them on as required. I'm going to pick for this particular example in situ concrete 150 mil staircase. Okay, so that's my staircase drawn. Okay, grip editing the staircase, I get lots of flexibility. So if I go to my um, section view, I can use the align tool and I can align my staircase to the sketch geometry. Okay, if I pick my landing, I get a couple of uh, handles. I can grab my handles and I can grip edit my handles to where they want to be including constraints so I can apply it and I can actually lock it to the end wall so if my building changes size the landing will go with it. Okay, I can grip edit my flights so if I select my flight you'll notice I've got two symbols I have a small dot and a handle so if I grab the small dot and drag it out it increases the number of risers. Okay, so I can get the exact number of risers to go where I want them to be. What I can also do is if I pick the handle um, I can actually reposition and move my flight where I need it to be and you'll see it moves the flight in all views. Okay, So you can get exactly the right number of risers and the, the staircase in the right position. Okay, so That's the staircase as I require it. Okay. Green tick to finish. Okay, it's got a warning coming up saying it's not really tick, that's fine because it's what I actually require. So, okay, adding um, and changing my landing now. So again, to make it ultimately flexible, if I select my staircase, what I can do is I can go to Edit Staircase. I can pick an individual component. In this place, in this particular case, I want to pick the landing. I'm going to convert it to sketch based. Okay, which will convert it back. A little warning saying once you've converted it, it's irreversible, which is fine. Once you've actually converted it, now if I select the component, I now have the ability to edit the sketch. Okay, It turns it into the traditional uh, sketch based stair and I can pick hold of it and I can delete it and I can put a nice arc on here instead. Okay, So it gives me uh, the staircase that I need. Okay, Adding railings to my staircase. So if I finish my staircase, I'm now going to add a railing. Again, new option, place on host. So I'm going to say place on host, pick the host, and it puts my landings. Okay, a little warning coming up saying it may not clue that that's that's absolutely fine because it's what I require. Okay, if I go in now, what, what you will find is my uh, the railings that I've applied on there aren't actually what I want, so they're a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my external railing, I'm going to go to edit path. And I can go round, and I can delete all of the um, unnecessary geometry. So I say I don't want any of these. I don't want that, and that's fine. Okay, and I can finish my railings, and it then gives me exactly what I want in the way of railings for this particular job. Okay, modifying the um, transition piece, which is here. Um, if I hover over, I'm going to press the tab key and I'm going to select that top rail. As soon as I select the top rail, I then get the chance to edit rail. Okay, if I go to edit rail, okay, I have the ability to be able to change the handrail. So for this particular one, I want to use an elliptical rail. 
and you see it changes the profile. Um, I get the series of options under my railing. So if I go to my types, um, there's a series of options I get under here. Extension type post. Okay, I can say I want a wall mounted extension with a, a value. Okay to that, and it then gives me a small truncated piece of railing. I can go in and say I want a floor based railing extension, and it gives me a different type of railing. Okay, I'm going to change it back to post style railing. Okay, what I can do now is um, inside the sketch, I can start to if I pick it, I can edit the path and I can actually select my geometry because I might want something slightly different. So for this particular transition, instead of it actually being a square transition, I'm going to place an arc onto my model. A three point arc, first point, second point, third point, and then a small piece of line to, to bring it back to where I want to go. Okay, and as soon as I go green tick to finish, it then gives me the transition that I want. Okay. Uh, changing the um, the joints of the rail, again, you can do that, so in 2013. So if I hover over, I'm going to tab it, select it, and I can say edit rail. And one of the options I get now is to select a small part of it. Okay. Um, I then get the chance to edit joints. So if I say edit joint, I can select a particular joint and say I want to do that as a fillet. Okay, and pick a different type of joint and say I want to do that as a fillet as well. And green tick to finish, and it then gives me a nice filleted radius. Okay, that was the enhancements to staircases and components. I hope you'll find them as useful as I have in using Revit. Okay. If you require um, any more information on what you've seen or any information on Revit or any of the products, okay, please visit our YouTube site where we're posting videos and other tutorials. Visit www.adris.co.uk or ring the number on screen and we'll be more than willing to help. Thank you for watching this presentation.